This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics God, preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Now, today's episode, woo, we got a team from Norway that's chiming in, getting some advice, trying to find out what's going on. What do they need to work on on this blueprint that they submitted? How can they put it up and set it up and put it together? What are they doing wrong? Are they being a biscuit-headed grower, especially when you're jumping into the commercial realm? It's not the same. This is why I say you practice how you play. You can't bring those hobby things up into the commercial area. It's just not going to work. So they need the real advice. They need some real advice, something that can, is applicable and that can be used to make some money. Woo, let's get right into it. Hi, my name is uh, Christian. Thank you for responding in our email. What's going on, Christian? Woo! Uh, we are just uh, starting up a business in Norway and uh, we want to build a commercial setup. We have uh, the blueprints here in the front of us and we will try to explain as good as we can. In the end, we will ask you some questions. So we have uh, a sump here, which is large enough to hold all the water from the uh, media beds uh, I'm sorry the NFT beds and we have uh, a split water flow here which goes all around the setup and stops here and go all around into the, the NFT systems here and we have uh, runoffs from all the separate um, parts uh, right back into the sump. Uh, the sump is located lower than all other components in the factory and uh, the only place where we have an electrical pump located. The water flow is very hard and we have um, cranes on all or ventiles where we can adjust the water levels on all the um, uh, entries to the components. Uh, I will start with explaining the grow beds here, which are NFT systems. Uh, we do not know which is the best to use NFT here or some kind of deep water culture system. I'm going to tell you right now, Christian, um, if you're just getting started, don't really have experience, you're going to want to start with a deep water culture setup. It's going to be easy, more, way more easier to use and to um, maintain than an NFT system. That's for more advanced growers, or especially if you had don't don't if you have some experience using those. I myself started out with the NFT, so that's why I uh, have NFT systems uh, set up. But if you're just getting going, you want to rearrange your whole entire setup for a deep water culture system, just because of the ease of use, and it's going to save you a lot of time on trying to figure out how to get the NFT system to, to work correctly. If you're really trying to get down and dirty and get into business and get going and not trying to maintain and learn stuff um, as uh, much as you're gonna need to with an NFT system, then I would do the deep water culture system, hands down. So on top of that, before we keep going, um, you're gonna have to rearrange that. If you take the deep water culture approach, this would be correct for an NFT system, the way you have it set up with the split flow, but you're going to have to rearrange it if you use a, um, a DWC setup, a deep water culture setup, because the NFT or the split flow is just going to cause you more um, uh, a cost in your pumping and uh, the size of your pump. It's going to cost a tremendous amount more uh, money to, um, to pump the water if you do it this way. So I would do everything on a gravity based setup, um, which is what I um, uh, always tell my students if you're going to use a deep water culture setup. You don't really want to go with the split flow. So we would have to rearrange this entire thing. And what I would suggest right now, what I'm going to tell you is I would model, if you do use a DWC, which I recommend, I would model it after the University of Virgin Island. I would, use, I would model it after their system. They pretty much set up the blueprint for uh, commercial systems using deep water culture setups. That's what I would do. I would look up their system and model it pretty much exactly the way they have it with the exception of you would be able to change out the filter components that they have. That would be the only thing that you could uh, that you would be able to modify. And I would suggest modifying that because when they made those filters back then, when they started, all the updated filters like the bead filters and drum filters weren't really uh, weren't really in, in in place at that time. So they used the old, you know, like the um the they use clarifiers and other things like that. So that would be the only difference. But I would model it after their entire setup. 
uh, with the exception of that. Or you can do it with that if you still want to. Let's continue. The point here is that the beds are one system. It's not uh, separate um, uh, beds. So we have one big bed, which is uh, 2 meters times 12.5 meters. And these beds goes in 12 layers in each place. So we have four places where we grow and there's 12 layer in each place. Uh, the total is then 100 square meters times 12 la layers. And this gives us 1,200 square meters where we grow lettuce and mini greens. Uh, this systems flow with water from one level where it uses gravity down to the other level and so on and then back into the sump. And this uh, cont continues with the same system in all, other, uh, all of the grow beds. Then uh, we go over to the fish tanks. These are 3000 liters per tank and we have separated a little part of the tank here where we have small fish. We will probably have an, a tank for ourselves, where, for, well, for the fish, the small fish, a separate tank. But um, in this um, blueprint, we have chosen to do it this way. So there's no probably um, in this equation. It is you must have separate tanks for the fish. You have to have an entirely separate nursery setup to grow out your fish. You don't want to put any fingerlings in these main grow out production area because it poorly utilizes space. You have all these small fish in here and these big tanks and they're poorly utilizing the space. You need to have a separate nursery tank in order to grow up the fish. You grow them out to a certain size before you put them in the main tank. And that way you utilize, you effectively utilize space. That's what you want to do. So you need a totally separate nursery system for the fingerlings and for your uh, for a, as you raise them up until they get to a, a size that makes sense to put inside of your tank. Usually over here we do somewhere around 30 to 50 grams of but using tilapia. I know you're using trout, um, so it may be it may be different. But over here it's around 30 to anywhere between 30 and 50 grams raised up and then put into the main production t uh, system. Not small fingerlings being put in there or small fish. It just it just you, it's it's a waste of space and you're gonna lose a lot of money doing it that way. Let's continue. So, from the fish tank, the water goes from an overflow into the media beds with the, where we have worms. So, one question comes here where we want to know, does, is it best to have a separate flow of water to the sump from the fish tank or should we have um, the system like we have it here? Will this work? Where the water goes from the fish tank and into the media beds and then to the sump. So Christian, none of those, would, I wouldn't suggest any of those. I would suggest removing the media bed entirely. There's no reason to put a media bed in any of these commercial setups. There's no reason to put it in here. A media bed is not doing, it's, uh, the reason why you don't want to add it in here, there was a many reasons, but one of the reasons is there's no, um, it, there's no predictable or scientifically uh, proven method as of now on how to mix a deep water culture setup with a um, media bed because they require two separate feeding rates and fish stocking density. They, can't, they don't accept the same amount. So when you mix them together, you lose predictability. Whereas if you just have one system, a deep water culture setup, it's predictable. You know how much feed you put in and how much plant production area that will, uh, uh, um, that will sustain. But when you mix them together, it's much more difficult to, um, to be predictable. You, it's just not something that has been figured out yet and someone has, no one's uh, done the correct uh, uh, trials and, um, and, and scientifically uh, 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 put together data. No one's done that yet. It's just a, it's just more of a headache. So you would I would remove this entire media bed. There's no reason to have it in there. For a uh, second reason is there's nothing that you can grow in a media bed that can't be grown in a deep water culture setup or NFT system. Anything in, in, in referring to a, a a commercial setup, something that you're gonna make for money. I'm not talking about large papaya trees or anything like that. Or trying to grow tomato. I mean uh, uh, potatoes and and carrots and stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about stuff that's gonna make real money. Nothing you can grow in a, deep, uh, a media bed that you can't grow in a, um, a deep water culture or an NFT system. And so it's pointless to even have uh, the mixture there. It's, it, all it is is going to have, it's going to uh, uh, make your uh, labor more costly because it's a lot, way more to maintain these media beds correctly, to do it correctly and maintain it correctly 
than it is to do a deep water culture setup. Way more maintenance. And labor is going to be the most expensive cost when you're doing it for commercial setup. Labor is going to take up all the, the majority of the cost. It's going to take up a big portion of the cost. So we don't want to add any of these media beds in there. Media bed is good for hobby stuff, but not for, uh, um, for big commercial things. If you're using, it don't matter what you want to grow. If you want to grow fruiting crops, you can still grow that in a D, uh, DWC setup. Absolutely fine. You can grow that like tomatoes, cucumbers. You can grow that in there. We're not growing papaya trees because you're not going to make any money. You're not growing any of those large trees like that for a media bed that you would need a media bed. So get the media bed all the way out of there. And it's going to, so it, because it's not giving you any extra benefit, it's giving you a headache and it's uh, reducing the predictability of the system currently. So let's get it out of there. Here we have a uh, trout in these tanks. So we feed them about uh, zero, well, 200 grams a day. Uh, 20 grams per square meter is the right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we feed them 20 grams per square meters. It's a little bit lower than uh, the feed rate on the tilapia, but uh, we have talked we have talked or spoke to people in Norway who does the same and they feed at that rate. So maybe you have some something to say about um, the feed rates and the type of fish we use. We are very interested to know because not many people use trout in these systems. And regarding the t uh, fish, you're saying that you use trout. Yes, uh, very rare um, do people use trout with aquaponics. It can be used depending on the climate, but most people do use tilapia because of their hardiness and their rapid growth. It's, it, it's a big benefit of being able to use tilapia just because of those reasons and because of the, um, the market demand. A lot of people like tilapia. Tilapia is one of the fastest growing fish uh, being consumed, especially here in America. It's rising up to the top on the uh, fish that are being consumed. So those are the main benefits. It's just hardy. It's really the perfect fish for beginners. It's like if you can't raise tilapia fish, you can't re raise any fish. Trout are a lot more sensitive, so you're going to have to make sure the parameters, the water quality parameters are much more in tuned and fine tuned and uh, uh, suited for trout because they're not as, or they're, much, they're, they're more sensitive than tilapia. So that's a reason why uh, people are using tilapia over the trout. If you had the option um, and the market demand is there, then I would definitely go with uh, tilapia. But you can use the trout. Um, I just don't really have any experience using trout. Um, I just know from reading other literature and, um, and, and listening to other people who have raised trout that they're more sensitive um, than uh, tilapia are. Um, the, here we have a particle filtration. The particle filtration you know all about. And this also go into the sump. Here we have a biofiltration. Uh, this biofilter is um, built up with a lot of small uh, plastic uh, figures. So it contains a lot of uh, area so, for the um, bacteria to grow and then the water goes back into the sump as i explained so uh, then we have a heat cooling and aeration area this is a tank where the water flow is very hard from uh, the main course of water and uh, we are cooling it and heating it uh, with sensors from uh, this control panel uh, depending on how the temperature is and um, the aeration area is of course very important and uh, this also go back to the sump tank here as i was trying to tell this is a control panel and we also monitor the ph the temperature the nitrate and the nitrate levels and the oxygen and oxygen and uh, carbon levels so good you have those are pretty much the the parameters that must be measured and monitored and tested for um, those are pretty much it. So you're doing a good job. Those are the pretty much the standard and you want to monitor those and keep a close eye on that, especially when you're dealing with the trout, especially when you're dealing with trout and even other types of fish, um, with tilapia as well, but you can, you have a little bit more leeway when you're dealing with tilapia, you have a lot more wiggle room, uh, with the parameters, but when you're dealing with other fish that are less uh, or more sensitive, you definitely need to keep an eye on all that. Just as you, just as you have uh, noted here on your diagram. So uh we really want to know if this system will work uh how much uh, fish we need we have or with the feed rate we have done a lot of mathematical calculations but as we told you we have not tried this setup in this large scale yet 
So, we also want to know how it would work with this uh, media bed setup and uh, with the worms. And uh, if this is the best setup for uh, vertical, vertical growing aquaponic setup. So, and I'm really sorry about my uh, English. I'm Norwegian. So thank you very, very much again for looking at our video. We will give you a next video, which will explain and show you our uh, prototype. So yes, once again, like I said, you remove that media bed, get that out of here. There's no point of having that in there. All that's going to do is just cause a headache and uh, 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 increase your labor cost. So we want to get rid of the media bed all in all. Um, I would seriously consider doing a deep water culture setup. You're not going to be able to grow as many plants that you want to grow, but it's going to give you room to, um, uh, uh, to, to, to learn and to not have to stress out as much. It's going to give you a wider uh, a margin of error when you're dealing with a deep water culture uh, setup. When you're dealing with an NFT setup, you, you've got to remember, you're dealing with thin films of water running through. If anything happens, you only have a small reservoir of water that the roots are touching, and something is going to happen. It's not a if, it's just when it does happen. It's going to happen that you're going to have problems. So if you have a deep water culture system, you have that large reservoir of water to protect the plants where you can go and fix your problem, um, and then you, you don't really have to worry about it. But NFT... When the, you got the thin film running, when something happens, you don't really have that much time. You don't have that much time to figure it out, especially if it's during a hot day. You don't have time. The stuff is going to wilt and you're going to have problems. And, and especially at this large scale, you're going to have a lot of cost and you don't have time to be trying to figure it out. Now, if you are already a veteran with NFT and you already had a lot of experience doing it, then we can do, we can work with something like this. We can make a few tweaks um, and uh, maybe add um, some better filtration in here better options of filtration, um, and, and then we can probably rearrange this system a little bit better, um, do a little bit better rea uh, rearranging so we can utilize the space because you have a lot of space in between, between the tank and the beds. There's a lot of empty space there that we that, that, that's just taking up room. So I don't know if this is going to go inside of a, a hoop house, a greenhouse, an actual factory. I don't know what this is going in into, but there's a lot of space in there I see um, that could be uh, pr more properly uh, utilized. But I would actually consider doing a deep water culture setup set, uh, set for your circumstance. That's what I would do for your circumstance. Get in there. Get some predictability. You don't have time. You're dealing with commercial stuff. You don't have time to be sitting here trying to figure out uh, what the, uh, trying to be a maintenance man on an NFT system or a vertical system. You just don't have time for that. You don't have time for You need to be out there marketing and getting sales and getting, um, uh, uh, getting deals and dealing with customers and bringing customers in. You need to, that's what you need to spend your time doing. Not being an aquaponic grower or being a maintenance man. You need to be an a, a, a entrepreneur and a business person. That comes before anything else. So DWC setup, that's what I would recommend. Um, and using a UVI setup. Um, and there's systems already that are pre-built. You don't have to do any calculations. It's already pre-built and pre-tested. Um, we're, we're in contact with manufacturers right now. Me and my team, um, we're in contact with manufacturers. We have... Uh, um, uh, 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 places that manufacture systems already pre-built with the, um, the fish tanks and everything else. It may be, um, maybe you can find something like that in your area if you're able to, or just go through, do the calculations, um, and correctly size your system for a DWC setup. And I think that would, I know that would be more suitable for you instead of, uh, uh, putting all of this together with an NFT setup and, um, you know, having no experience with it. So hopefully that helps you out, Christian. Hopefully you get some, uh, some results and some, um, and, and some uh, prosperity when you set up your system. Hopefully you're able to get out there and serve your purpose. And um, hopefully you'll be able to get, uh, get some advice and get some help out of this uh, session here. I know you have another video I'm going to go through. and I haven't checked it out yet. I'm going to go through, look at it. I think it's your prototype. I'm going to go through, look at that. And then uh, I'll make a part two and see if I can add anything extra to it. Um, but with that being said, anyone else? You have videos, blueprints, you need some help, submit it, Brooklyn at the school of aquaponics.com, detailed video explaining what's going on. This is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the school of aquaponics, preventing you from becoming a biscuit headed grower. That is the mission. Woo!